hi guys uh, welcome to this video so in this video i'm going to continue looking at the igcsc ict uh, february march 2023 paper 21 in the last video we looked at the section on databases and now we finish uh, off this uh, database section with uh, step number 23 and 24. all right so step 23 says using fields from all the tables producing a tabular report that and then you have got all these criteria that is listed here i'm not going to go into detail reading them up but we're going to um, read them out as we do the uh, the steps okay so we're going to create a report that um, um, is based on this criteria and like i said in the other video that uh, there are two things that you need to pay attention to when you're creating a report the first one is how are you going to extract the data that meets the criteria that has been specified for example the data that meets this criteria okay uh, you need to create data or extract data that meets this criteria shows only these field names and then the class code is 5c and the house name is mars and then once you do that then can you manipulate this data to present it in in a summarized way or in a meaningful way so that recipients can make sense out of this data that you've extracted for example we want it to be sorted out in some order. We want it to be displayed in a certain orientation, could be portrait. We want it to fit on a single page. Uh, we want to calculate the average mark. We want to um, uh, display the number of decimal places uh, to zero and so on and so forth. So this last part here has to do with manipulating the data that you have extracted. Whereas this first part here has to do with extracting data that meets a criteria. Uh, for your report okay so this is what we're going to do so usually you start with the top part which is extracting the data and then once you extract the data then you can go and manipulate this data to present it in a meaningful uh, way okay so let's go to our access and then let's go and uh, create first of all we'll create a query so the query basically is about um, the data that we want to extract from our database I'm going to put this as usual on the left side and have uh, the question paper on the right hand side and then I'll probably just zoom in, uh, zoom out a little bit, uh, not too much, but um, maybe just like that so that we can see the questions as well as um, uh, and, and, and be able to do some activity. So um, the first step that you want to start with, let me just change the color. The first step that you want to start with is actually this step here. So this step is basically um, uh, showing you which fields you will need, okay? Because you cannot do this step or this step. You cannot do this step here uh, and this step there. You can't do these steps um, without, um, without uh, first of all, um, choosing which fields you want to, uh, to select, okay? So let's start. The first one we will need to extract will be gender, then family name, given name, house name, math, computer science, teacher name, in this order, and then the labels must be fully displayed. So we're going to create um, a query. So go for query wizard, uh, go for a simple query, and then the fields are coming from all the tables we've been told. So the first one is gender, and the gender is coming from the test table. So just get gender, and then followed by family name, then followed by given name, and then house name is going to come from this other table, houses, then house name. And then um, the subjects are going to come from the test table. So we have, first of all, math, and then we have computer science, and then we have this um, uh, teacher name. So teacher name is going to come from the staff table. Uh, you have teacher name here, and then you have, um, well, that, that's pretty much. Um, so let's just verify. You have got a gender, family name, given name, house name, math, computer science, and um, a teacher name in this order. So we go to next, and then um, uh, next, and then I'm going to save this as step 23 query, and then just uh, go ahead and modify this query. Just say, okay. So now that we're done with the query, uh, what I'm going to do now is to simply just um, maximize this so that we have a full screen and then we can go back to the question paper um, just to um, to see some of the things that we need to do. So now we've extracted this information. So the next thing that we need to do is to 
um, select the criteria. Um, so we told that the class code must be 5C and then the house name must be mass. So let's go to uh, this and then the class code. Uh, notice that we do not have the class code here. So we can just drag and drop it here and then add um, class code was not part of the fields that must be seen. So you need to make sure that you check this. Don't forget to check this out. Okay. And check this. So, um, so class is 5C. And then let's run the query and see if we have all the five C's. So that's perfectly fine. We have the five C's. Take it back to design view and remove this one. Okay. So the next one, houses is supposed to be mass. So house name is supposed to be mass. Uh, run the query. And now you have got mass. Okay. That's perfectly fine. Uh, so we're done with the criteria. Let's go back to uh, the question paper. Um, so this is done and this is done. So um don't worry about the labels and um, the labels being displayed in full uh we'll do this in the report okay so now the next thing that we need to do is to take all this information and start to create a report based on this extracted data so now um we're going to um save this okay and then let's go and um create first of all we close this then create and then report wizard. And then now we're going to create our report based on step 23 query. And then next, uh, get all the data inside there. Next and then next and then next. We don't do anything here. And then next. Now we need to decide what's the orientation of the page. So first of all, the orientation of the page is portrait. And then it's supposed to fit on a single page. So we'll go to this one. Orientation is portrait. And then adjust width so that all fields fit on a single page. This is single page wide, but make sure that this is checked because it will allow all the data to fit um, from left to right to fit on one page. And we are creating a tabular report as usual, so we leave it at tabular. So now here we can give the title of the report. Last time I gave the title of the report from the report uh, itself. Now we can try to use the report wizard just to see how different it will be. Um, so the title of the report is includes the title five year five test report for mass okay so let's come here and let's say year five uh test test report for mass okay so just make sure um that you have um the capital letters and the small letters um, perfectly fine and then let's uh, modify this report design and then um, yeah so now that we are in design view we can add a few things first of all we can add a sort which means we need to sort the data so sort the data first of all into ascending order of gender and ascending order of family name so let's come here so we will go to add a sort the first one is gender in ascending order and then add another sort family name again in ascending order a on top okay then next thing that we need to do is to um let's play around with the labels now okay let's make sure that the labels are not in front they have been told not to group the data so not to group the data which means don't add a group at the bottom here so now let's sort out these fields um, let's make sure that they are fully visible um so gender and family name. Um, so I'm just going to resize this as usual, holding control, or rather shift key, and then pressing the left arrow. And then um, here, I'm just pressing the left arrow without holding any other button. And then now I hold shift and I press down like that. And um, we can select them like that and push this, this side a little bit. And then have this 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 side okay and have this this side okay whoops uh, just undo and go this side I accidentally pressed the um, down arrow and then this one push it this side and then this one this side and then the teacher name beside 
Okay, so just verify that all the fields have actually been represented. Sometimes you find that you're trying to create that after teacher name, there could be another field um, and you may be stuck knowing what to do. So in our case, teacher name is the last one. So um, there's no need for us to do anything further than this. Okay, so um, let's go. Uh, where are we? So this looks good. We'll take it back to design view so that we can now do some calculations, if any. Um, so we are done with all this part, this side. Uh, now we need to calculate the average mark, okay, um, for mathematics, okay. So in this selection and put in this number below the math column. So we need to go to uh, this one, uh, enlarge the report footer. We don't need the um, um, the page footer, so I'm just gonna close it. We don't need it. Our report is so small that we don't need the page footer. Um, so now I'm going to go to uh, report design and I'm going to pick up this uh, control uh, text box and then I'll put it just below the math column. I'll put this box here to calculate the average. Now average is given by AVG and then specify what column you want to um, calculate the average for. So. My column is this one, so I'm gonna run this now in layout view and then just have a look. Okay, so the average is calculated, but it is a decimal number, so we need to um, we need to make it a whole number. Remember, we are told to display everything according to zero decimal places. So um, uh, we are going to right click and go to properties for this one. And then uh, under format, make sure that this is fixed and then under decimal places, make sure that it is zero. Okay, and you have just uh, 76. And the other thing that I'm gonna do probably is to um, resize it. Yeah, that's fine. And then I'm gonna remove the borders like I did in the previous video, I'll remove the borders. So border style solid, I'll change it to transparent. And now we can add the title or the label uh, heading. So come here. And it's supposed to include the label average math score, average math score. So come here and just say average math. Uh, is it math or maths score? <laughs> average maths score. Now, take note of uh, capitalization. It's supposed to be capital S for score. Okay. Average math score. And I'll reduce this like that. Okay, so that looks good. Now, um, the other thing that I, we need to do is, so we, we need to display it with zero decimal places. We've done that. We need to calculate it. We've done that. And then um, we did this and we did the title. Um, so the title we're told should be in the larger font size and fully visible. So we can check um, how the title is. Okay, this is large enough, okay, and it's fully visible. That's fine, I can leave it as it is. Um, you can enlarge it if you want further than this, but this should be perfectly fine. Um, so the next one is you need to add your details at the bottom of the report, but since our report is so small, so we're just going to add the details uh, in the, um, we add the details in the, um, in the footer, okay, just here. So I'm gonna get um, this one and the label, and I'm gonna add just at the far right end here. I'm gonna say uh, Chikasa Evans, and then AE361 and 0001, okay? So that's fine, and we come back here. So this is done. The next thing that we need to do is place in our evidence document a screenshot showing the database formula that is used uh, to calculate the average mark. So basically you just need to come here, expand this uh, formula and just get a screenshot of um, this uh, formula here. So I'll just go to my snip into and get a new window snip and then uh, just get this formula here. Okay. So let's go ahead, copy this and then we'll go ahead and paste it in our evidence document under step 23 and paste it like that. And that should be perfectly fine. All right, um, so the next part of the question says, um, so we're done with this one. The next part of the question says that um, save and print your report. Okay, so you guys can go ahead 
um, save and then print the report um, uh, and like I told you in the previous one the better way to print this is first of all print it to PDF okay so um, just uh, say select uh, printer and then you can print it to Microsoft PDF um, and then um, 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 it will it will print first of all to a PDF document okay um, so here I'll just say print out to print out to okay and then um, okay so uh, we can find our printout to uh, it's here and this is our report uh, for our printout too okay so um, that's fine um, so once you have it in your PDF and you're happy um, like like I am happy that the report will come out like this then now you can go ahead and print on your actual printer so this way um, it makes it easy for you to see how your data is going to come out um, before you actually even go to pick up your printout or somebody brings your printout and stuff like that this this is just a perfect way of um, um, making sure that all your documents are um, they are in order so next thing guys that we're going to do is um, uh, go to step number um, this one step 24 export the report created in step 23 in a portable document format which is PDF and then um, save the exported file in your work area with the file name year five. So before we come to the evidence, let's go ahead and just export it. So I'm gonna bring up the pane. So just save this and close it. And then I'm gonna bring up the pane. So now what we need to do is just go here, right click and then go to export and choose PDF, okay? So this one is supposed to be five year. Um, just verify again the name year five not five year year five okay pdf and it should be stored in your work area so i'll store mine in p2 and publish okay so it is published so this is this is the report and the next question now asks you to um the next question asks you to uh, place in your evidence document a screenshot to show that the exported file has been saved in your work area make sure that there's evidence of file type and file name so come here in your work area so p2 and then at the bottom here you want to show evidence that this file has actually been saved so now what i need to do is just get a screenshot of this now um i'm gonna just drag it a little bit like that and then just um, do this and then this is my file so I'm going to go to my snip into and uh, create my new window snip. And this is my evidence that my file has been saved. There is evidence of file name and evidence of file type. So just come here and copy this and paste it in our evidence document. And under step 24. Okay, and just resize it a little bit. Okay. So the evidence is there, year five is there, that's perfectly fine. And that marks, um, I think the end of the database section. And there you go with your total 30 marks. So task four now asks you to print the evidence document since now there's nothing that you're going to be putting in the evidence document. So make sure that your name, center number, and candidate number appear on every page of your evidence document. Um, we did that at the start, so we don't need to worry about that. and. Uh, you just need to counter check probably um, in case you did not but for us we did we added it in the header and um, uh, save your evidence document and print your evidence document okay so go ahead save it and then print it okay so the next thing that we are going to look at next it will be task number five and that will be done in the next video all right so see you in the next video